And we already know that those three factors are quite a big deal when it comes to dealing with depression, anxiety, um, and basically any sort of mental health issue. Do you ever feel depressed, anxious, or maybe even a little agitated sometimes for absolutely no reason at all? What might shock you is this is actually not your mistake. This is the environment's mistake. More specifically, this is the food you consume. Now, this might sound a little weird, but yes, this actually is very, very possible. And we'll be explaining why exactly. Now, even though much of this isn't actually understood as to why this is happening in the first place and why so many people are experiencing so much depression and so much anxiety and basically just problems like mental problems, we're gonna have to look at this a little bit more carefully because actually we can find the answer, but we have to do a little bit of digging. The funny thing is if we actually did have the answer now though, then all these antidepressants would actually work. But lo and behold, as we might already know, these antidepressants come with some serious side effects and even worse than the symptoms, which instead of being super depressed, it makes you even suicidal. So why exactly is this all happening? Well, this is where we're gonna have to understand what exactly is happening more specifically with the brain and what do we already know right now? Now there is a 90 or even a 99% chance that this will most likely help you at the very, very least, if not completely cure it at all. And that might sound very strange, but first let's look at what exactly we know does seem to help with this. Now, we already know that ketogenic diets, for instance, do seem to help a little bit with this. However, they don't fully, fully fix it. Now, if we look a little bit as to why ketogenic diets do this, absolutely, amazingly, this has to do with three main factors of the ketogenic diet. Then one of the main things about the ketogenic diet is the fact that the ketogenic diet in particular actually reduces the inflammatory markers, it reduces the oxidative stress, and it reduces the mitochondrial dysfunction. And we already know that those three factors are quite a big deal when it comes to dealing with depression, anxiety, um, and basically any sort of mental health issue. Now, if you're really interested in more details about this, then I recommend you check out my video, Glucose is Quite Literally Killing You, which explains the biochemistry behind what exactly is happening, as well as my video on how plants are quite literally giving you chemotherapy. So if you really, really wanna know more details, then go check out those videos. But now I'm gonna be explaining how exactly these markers, specific, specifically inflammatory markers, as well as oxidative stress. And on top of that, the last one being mitochondrial dysfunction are actually increasing. Now let's look at the first one, oxidative stress. Now we already know how oxidative stress actually already occurs. And we know that oxidative stress mostly comes from specifically complex one during the process of oxidative phosphorylation being very prone to electron leakage because it uses NADH. Now, this is a big deal. And the reason it's a big deal is because this means that we are going through glucose oxidation when we are giving ourselves a lot of this oxidative stress. Now, instead of going through glucose oxidation, we can actually go through fatty acid oxidation, which is what the ketogenic diets in particular do a little bit of. They don't do it too well, but they do increase it. And this does help. Now let's look at that second one, mitochondrial dysfunction. Now we actually already know mitochondrial dysfunction is quite linked to this first one, which is basically the same thing. And this comes from, once again, reactive oxygen species and basically electron leakage coming throughout complex one and complex three, although we can definitely prevent the one coming from complex one. Now, this is again, very important because when we are giving ourselves these reactive oxygen species going through glucose oxidation, this is a big deal because what ends up happening is a superoxide will be formed, which is basically a oxygen molecule with a little dot on it. And that oxygen molecule with a little dot on it ends up turning into a hydrogen peroxide, which that hydrogen peroxide will turn into a hydroxyl free radical. And that's a big deal. And the reason that's a big deal is because that hydroxyl free radical loves to be very free and quite radical. So it will wreak havoc on your cells and it will deal a lot of damage. And in the process of dealing damage, it could damage the mitochondria. Now this is what we want to avoid. So we already know how to do this, which means no glucose oxidation or prevent glucose oxidation as much as possible, which we can do. And let's look at that third factor, inflammation. Now, inflammation can be easily preventable actually. And we 
do give ourselves inflammation on a day-to-day -day basis, oddly enough. Now you might say, inflammation, isn't that basically where I just cut my finger and then I suddenly see swelling and it gets all red? Well, yes, that is one of the parts of inflammation. However, inflammation can also come from your diet, oddly enough. And we already know, plants in particular are very, very good at giving you inflammatory responses. Now that might sound a little weird, but yes, Plants are quite good at this. And the reason they're good at this is because they have defense chemicals. And these defense chemicals in particular will, for instance, like lectins, or it could even be another defense chemical like solanine, will damage the cell. And it's very, very good at damaging the cell. And what ends up happening is an inflammatory response in turn is made. And this, your body doesn't like because every single time inflammation is induced, you get problems happening. And once again, you wanna stop this. So how exactly do we stop all of these from happening? Now, contrary to what you're regularly told that fruits and vegetables are very healthy, turns out they actually aren't that healthy. And the reason they're not healthy is for a myriad of reasons, but more specifically in this video, it's because of inflammatory markers and the phytotoxins that they have. Now, in order to prevent these inflammatory markers from basically hurting you, you could do this two ways. The first way is with antioxidants. Now, the problem is this won't actually completely prevent it. This is almost like putting a Band-Aid on a giant flesh wound. It's not really gonna do much. Or there is the second way, which is just to abstain from eating them. Oddly enough, yes, that is quite possible. And how exactly would I abstain from eating them? What else could I possibly eat? Well, luckily for you, there actually is a food out there in the world which does not have any phytotoxins. And not only that, it is very low in carbohydrates. So that already means inflammatory markers are lowered and carbohydrates in particular, glucose oxidation, is not happening for your body, which means less of those inflammatory markers and basically helping your brain and your mental health. Now, what exactly could that food possibly be? Hmm. Well, turns out it's meat. Yes, that's right, meat. The one thing that for some reason is told to be very, very unhealthy and causing a ton of problems. Now, if you're really interested in learning why all these claims are actually quite fake, then I recommend you check out my Science Behind Carnivore playlist where I explain all of this and I debunk every single claim that there possibly is against meat. And there is no scientific claim whatsoever. In fact, the scientific claims for meat are too strong. I actually can't find a single argument against it. Now, contrary to what you're told, LDL cholesterol and this whole fat thing, actually the fatty part of the meat is very, very healthy, especially if your body is deprived of cholesterol. And that's because many of the hormones like estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone, and many, many others, cortisol, corticosterone, uh, pregnenolone, and allopregnenolone, all of these hormones are basically made from the one molecule that I just mentioned, cholesterol. So yes, cholesterol is absolutely essential. So if you want to increase your testosterone levels, then have more cholesterol. And if you, as a woman, want to prevent this PMS problems from not happening, again, more cholesterol. Once again, it's basically all cholesterol and it's very, very important. Now, what meats exactly could I be talking about? Well, just some of the meats, to name a few, would be beef, eggs, lamb, those in particular I personally like, but there are many of other meats that you could eat like duck, pork, uh, salmon. I mean, there are a lot, a lot of meats that are very, very healthy and they don't contain those phytotoxins. Now you might say that is absolutely ridiculous. I'm never going to do that because there hasn't been anybody else who does this. Well, turns out there is. There's me and there is quite a bit of other people, probably around 300,000 to maybe 3 million people that I'm aware of who actually do do this, yes. So this is very, very effective at working and it does work, I can guarantee you that. And I am living proof of this. I used to have really, really bad IBS problems and those went straight out the door. I used to have really, really big problems when it comes to mood swings and chronic fatigue and all these other things and those also went straight out the door. So yeah, this pretty much cures or will solve any sort of problem you have, whether it be mental or physical that I'm aware of so far, because it's worked wonders for me, as well as my face. My face used to be absolutely covered with acne. And as you can see right now, it's not covered in acne. Now, before I go and I end this video, please any carnivores out there in particular, I would like you to comment down below and please share your experiences with what carnivore has helped you with and all the things that carnivore has done for you because I want this video to be for all the new people who are new to carnivore and they're not really too sure whether or not it does or doesn't work because they haven't seen or heard that much about it. So please, in the comments below, let your 
uh, experience on how carnivore worked for you, what it's done for you, and all that in the comments below. And once again, thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, then please like, sub, and comment down below because it really does help the video grow. And if you're really interested in supporting the channel, then please click the join button down below. That will do me wonders. And once again, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.